Um, if this is the input, and it's passing a pass gate, which is almost pass gate. That's VDD. That's ground. What is the output look like? <clears throat> Almost is good at passing zeros, but not ones. So it's going to do this for you. And the voltage here will be VDD minus VTHN. Because it can never reach VTHN. It's the PMOS pass gate. So what is a pass gate? Like this, right? So what is a P what about it's a PMOS pass gate? <clears throat> so PMOS is good at uh, passing VDDs but not zeros. What's going to happen is it's going to start from here and reach VDD and come back like this. So this voltage is VTHP. If it's a transmission gate, So this is a TG transmission gate. All the voltages can be passed through the gate because it has both voltages. Uh, both gates can do can pass zero zeros and VDDs um, to the output without any problems. All right, that's why we need to use TG instead of PG. But if you want to use P PG to pass the VDD to here, you have to raise the voltage um, at the gate. This is what we covered last time and also from the, for the uh, sample and hold circuit as well. All right, if you don't know why, just watch the video from, from Monday. Okay. And no one watched the video because I only got three views on YouTube. And two of the views are mine because the one I was checking if the video is available or not. After I upload, I have to double check, right? So two of the views are mine. I did it. Um, that's the first one I want to cover, which I was, able, was not able to cover on Monday. And the second one, Let's look at inverter switching characteristics. Let's draw inverter first. In, out. <clears throat> so if you didn't watch the video on Monday, there will be a. We probably will have a problem of understanding this. So let's try to make it uh, as easy as possible. So all these are the parasitic capacitors, right? So they are not physically connect, connected between the gate and drain, or gate and source, gate and drain, gate and drain, gate and source. They are just parasitic capacitors. They are models, right? No one connect capacitor in between these two nodes. I just modeled it because there is a parasitic capacitor in the transistor. Here's a dielectric material, here's a gate. So if I split this capacitor, 
as you know, there's a, there are two plates. So you can imagine this is a cap and I split this into two halves. So the parasitic capacitor here will be a half cox. Cox is a oxide capacitance. Here is another half. So I can model the gate capacitor, the gate and channel capacitor in this way. Half cox or half cox. And cox is given, it's a constant, depends on the material. Right? So that's why I can model these two capacitors like this. This is physically, this is a half cox. This is also a half cox physically, okay, if I'm not switching this on and off. However, if I'm switching in, either on or off, depends on the discussion on Monday. It takes about 20 minutes to explain that. If you don't know why, just go back to that video. Because of the mirror effect, the gate drain capacitance will not be a half cox anymore. It's going to be cox. Right, so you can split this capacitor into two coxes. It's very easy to understand why. Just watch the video for a couple of minutes. Okay, so now I just memorize it. It's cox here, cox here, and the same for this one. That's the drain. Cox here, cox here. So whenever you are turning this on or off, it's not half cox anymore. It's going to be cox. All right. So now let's look at the input. So due to the Miller effect, C in P, so the input capacitance of the PMOS will be what? So just look at the PMOS. What's the input capacitance of the PMOS? So this one is not changing because that's a source. It's being hold at being held at VDD, so it's not changing. Only one source is changing. So there's no mirror effect to this capacitor. And it's gonna be a half cox. However, this guy, this capacitor has a mirror effect. So it becomes cox. And we just name the rename the uh, cox of the PMOS as cox2. So C in P equals to a half cox two plus cox two, which is two thirds cox two. So that's the input capacitance of the PMOS. And the input capacitance of the NMOS is cox one is a cox of the NMOS, which is two thirds of cox one. So the total C in, when you are, whenever you are just looking into the input, so both the NMOS and PMOS are, uh, you know, act, acting, being switched on on and off. So you are getting an effective C in overall, which is C in N, the input of the NMOS capacitance plus C in P, which will be this one plus this one, which is two thirds of COX one plus COX two. That's the overall C in. So that's the conclusion of the overall C in, looking into the input. So what about looking into the output? What is the C out? Because the C out, that pin, the output pin, is being shorted to both the PMOS and NMOS. So C out P. So C out, let's look at C out P equals to cox two. And why is that? So for the output capacitance contributed by the PMOS, because this is a mirror effect capacitor, right? So you are thinking about it splitting this a half cox into two coxes. So one cox contributed to the input, one cox contributed to the output. So that's why C out P 
will be cox2 and c out n is also cox but cox1 looking into the input so whenever you are treating this mirror effect capacitor you split it and times two right so that's the effective capacitance of this capacitor and split into two capacitors one is connected to the output one is connected to the input but whenever you are doing the input analysis you you actually add cox2 and cox1 not a half right so when you are looking to the output it's the same thing you just add um, cox2 to cox1 so that's the overall output capacitance so c out equals to c out n plus c out p which is cox1 plus cox2 And now let's look at the inverter switching model. Here's the input and two capacitors. And because the gate does not have any electrical connection. It's a di dioxide, uh, dielectric material. It's oxide material. But you do have the channel resistance. And here's a switch. All right, I'll let you guys tell me what are these parasitics and what are these resistors. So this guy is a model for a inverter. What is this one? Is that C in part of C in? And that's a PMOS, right? So that's C in P equals to what? C in P equals to what? These two being added together. And what is it? C in P, two capacitors. Yeah. So this is C in N. So that's RP, which is normally given as a constant. So this will be C out. P equals to cox2, the C out N equals to cox1. And now we can get the intrinsic, it's called the intrinsic propagation delay of the inverter. TPLH equals to what? So whenever I'm talking about the pro prob propagation delay of the inverter, I'm talking about the output. I'm looking at the output. So when the output is changing from low to high, what is the propagation delay here? 0 0.7 RC, so what is R, what is C? 
So whenever the output is being changed from low to high, this switch will be closed. And it's actually drawing current from here. Or you can say it's being pulled up to VDD. So this R is not doing anything. So it's going to be 0 0.7 R, R, P, or RN, RP, right? And C is a capacitance. It's a C out overall. So it has to be both of the capacitors. Because this node is being connect to, connected to both of the capacitors. C total. For TPHL, from high to low, this is discon disconnected, it's disconnect circuit. And this node will be pulled down to the ground through this pass. It's going to be 0 0.7 RC, which is 0 0.7 RN C total. So it's the same capacitance. These two Cs are the same as to add these two together. So let's look at one example. <laughs> Estimate intrinsic delay of the following inverter oh, inverter inverter so this is on the page 320 and uh, refer to table 10.2 for all these parameters for this Transistor. So for NMOS, um, it's a 10 to 1 ratio, and it's a 0 .0 0 0.5 micron by 50 nano. So you can tell this is using a, a 50 nanometer technology from the model. And RN equals to 3.4K. And COXN. Cox N is what? Cox N is 0.625 femtol. For PMOS, it's a 20 to 1 ratio, and the physical size is 1 micron over uh, by 50 nano. RP is 3.4K. Cox P is 1.25 femtol farads. So what is the intrinsic propagation delay of the following inverter? Because Rn equals to Rp, so what you know is TPLH equals to TPHL. Is that correct? Because the propagation delay, the only difference is R. The C has to be C total, so both of the Cs are involved in the switching. Whenever it's being switched on or off, doesn't matter. So this is 0 0.7 times 3.4K times what? So what's the C total? Cox and Cox P. What is the C total here as the output node? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just add these two together. And the result is four point five picoseconds. 
Let's do the calculation. So femto is 10 to the negative 15, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the same example. If the inverter is used to drive a 50, 50 femtofarad load, what are the intrinsic propagation delays? So which means this inverter is going to drive a 50 femto farad load. <clears throat> Whenever you are drawing that model, That's Cox P, Cox N. Two thirds of that, that's RP, RN. And this guy is driving a C load, which is 50 femto. But in your circuit, Cox N. Cox P is what? 1.25 femto. Cox N is what? It's even smaller, 0 0.625. And this is 50 femto. It's way larger than these two. So whenever you are doing the calculation, TPHL equals to TPLH equals to 0 0.7 RC. C is the C total. Right? So C total will be these three capacitors being added together. But normally, the load capacitor is way larger than all these intrinsic or these parasitic capacitors especially for the smaller technologies, like this is 50 nanometer, it's not even the smallest. You can imagine for the 5 nanometer technology I'm talking about, which will be probably be launched in the end of this year. And this is 50 nanometer already very small, right? <laughs> it's compared to the 1 micron one. But what about 5? It's 10 times smaller. So you can imagine if the size is 10 times smaller, the capacity will be 10 times smaller as well, at least, or even more. So these guys will be tiny. But the load, you know, it normally is driving a whatever device, electrical device or something, so it has a way larger capacity. This is not even high, the highest. There can be picofarad stuff. So you can technically, uh, you know, technically can, you can ignore these two capacitors because you can see if you add all these capacitors together, it's only becoming 51 point something, right? Just use 50. It's pretty close to 50. So whenever you have a large load, you do not use, you do not consider all these small capacitors. Just directly use the load capacitor, which is pretty much 50 femto farads. And then do the calculation, right? Okay, let's do the quiz. Any questions?